I picked two research topics here. One is uh, sound source localizations, and I'm going to explain what it is. So, and the, the second topic is related to material process, material microstructure images here. I mean, I know a lot of you guys have, uh, uh, I mean, graduate students might have different research interests and topics. And so, but basically, I mean, these are the just, I want to utilize these examples to explain how you, how you, uh, how do you use or utilize the data data driven approaches to like say physics based or mechanical engineering applications so let's start with or oh, before that is please interrupt if you have any questions and i i love to i love to to i love to get in, interrupted during my presentations and this so please please to do so and let me start the first one. So it will be so okay. So the first one is we want to know. Say we put a lot of microphone arrays in the plan in plenary manners, and suppose they have some sound, and we want to figure out where. So we want to find out the location of that. So let me, in order to dip into the details, uh, let me briefly explain what the acoustic uh, source localization beam formings. The beam forming is the key keyword that you have to remember it. And I want to say, take, why don't we take a look at these figures? Say, suppose we have some kind of the source is located. And if we have array of microphones and you can see it's like the, the sound is, it's a acoustic wave and pressure wave. And I mean, is with uh, with the same velocity in the in the same plot in the velocity because and the mi micro array we have diff different distances you take into account different distances and delay somehow we can figure out some we call it beam forming maps it will be the outputs based on these measured the measure the signals to some manipulations calculate uh, math and do it and we 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 able to get the beam formings. Right. Basically, the, the basic idea is uh, direction of arrivals, and uh, based on that, we want to we, we 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 are able to estimate it. And this is in in the in in one dimensional case. And if we do the two dimensional space, probably this will be the this is gonna be the situation here. We have a plane, and there's some the the speaker or the sound source is located in somewhere and we have another place we put, so it's, it's a microphone arrays, it's randomly, randomly distributed and using that information, we can get some kind of informing maps. Here in, in we have in 1D and since we, we're talking about the, the in 2D space, the beamforming beam map is gonna be like in 2D. So for literature review, I mean, I mean, you don't need to know any of, uh, just I want to say is that this is where established field disciplines and there is some conventional ways and uh, the recently is, uh, using the deep learning models uh, utilized as way of data driven approaches. And for conventional ways, uh, two approaches, both of them are based on the model uh, using the physics based models and conventional beam forming maps, and basically uh, to, recon to construct the spatial distributions from the microphone array pressure signal signals that we've been doing it. And another one is deconvol deconvolution method. You don't need to know what deconvolution is. I mean, this I'm just showing that there are some the pre uh, the studies been going on. Is this one is iterative, so it will. Do a lot of uh, iterations. That's why it's it's gonna require high computation. Of course, it's gonna take some time. That was the the drawbacks. And for data driven method, is the problem is there is no physics behind. And this is the example of beam forming maps to generate the beam patterns. And the good thing is that based on the measured signals from the array of microphone somehow we are able to visualize it okay and the traditional ways that 
based on I mean these are the different example of beamforming maps and based on the probably you can like think of the I mean you can think of I'm I'm not sure I mean just I'm showing let me change the colors I mean these probably I don't know I mean just it's, we, out of these the beamforming maps we can estimate it and of course you know it's 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 a sound and acoustic wave and we can use a uh, wave equations and theory behind all kind of physics. I mean, for example, I, I don't know what it is, to, but, but the only reason that I'm showing this uh, equation is that it's a physics space, but it's complicated, even though it's a very simple case in everything we assume that in two dimensions and there is no uh, reflected wave and things like that. Okay. As opposed to the physics based models uh, approaches we here at this it, it, at this moment we're trying to do data driven method right so naive way is that okay this is measured and but it's manipulated into it in, we convert it into the beamforming map which is just assume that it's same as the the uh low data set we do some pre uh uh, man, uh manipulated to get so but there's uh, it's equivalent transformations, right? Using that one, and since we kind of say we we have instead of conducting the simulations, we uh, I mean the conduct a real experiment, we can do similar things in the simulation environment. Say suppose we 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 assume that is the the speaker we put right at right there, and we do similar we did we conduct the simulations we can get this kind of this kind of uh beamforming maps in when you train the model you know ai model steam learning model is this it could be the supervised in the framework so we take it this as inputs to showing these beamforming map into uh, ai and telling that this this is the the location of that so it's a supervised learning method and this is not the true actual architecture structures. I'm just this symbolic symbolic expression that I'm using data driven here. In this case, probably one of more uh, neural networks. And here, if we have a single speaker over there, the coordinator was probably like x and y. Probably p is power in intensity, whatever. And okay, okay, so. In order to generate the training models, we can randomly right, assign the location of the speakers and we can compute. We can numerically, using the scientific computing problem, I mean, we can get the corresponding informing maps, but now I switch it and swap it. I mean, informing maps is going to be the inputs and the coordinates is going to be the outputs. We train them, no problems, and uh, it, it's, it's working perfectly even though we didn't teach any physics behind. And I mean, this one was the first to try attempt the trial that we did is everybody happy about it. And we about to about to say this is the end of the project story. But the question is, what if what if we have two speakers here at the same time simultaneously? I right? say two speakers. Right? I mean, does we I mean, in that case, we have to think we need, say this one was the uh, X of one, Y of one, P of one, and we need X of two, Y of two, P of two. That means we need additional uh, node or neurons at the, as, a, as a output layers. Then the, that means that, that means we have to change the entire, I mean, the, the entire network structures. That means we have to, we have to create Another training data set, we have to have different structures networks and we have to train them again with the different structures and with different the training data set. So I guess this is not a, uh, I don't think this is sustainable way. Right? Can you agree with that? So at this moment, what we came up with is that we call it this target map. I mean, basically, these are just identical expressions instead of put you know, in the coordinates what we can do is that we can vi we can visualize this is the location of the speakers and we have say is any kind of gaussian or bell shaped distributions just mimic the behavior of 
right? And it, it, it now it became a target, I mean, image. So the original problem like this, we from taking the image as inputs and the, the produced output as coordinates, but as a, and on the other hand, this one is again, it's same as image as inputs, but the output is also image as with the target map that we define it here. So what we did is that now we change the original problem, original regression problems into image to image translation problems. So in this case, I'm, I mean, you're using like CNN based convolutional neural net based and like autoencoder structures, things like that. And now what we can do is that we take the, this any kind of beamforming map as inputs and we take another image, which is here in this case is, is a, we, we name it as a target map as inputs. And the good thing about it is that now image is image, right? We don't have to have a single speakers inside. We can multiple speakers and uh, a sound source. So we now is we, we lease the constraints on it. Now we don't need to know any, we, this one is, I mean, this with this kind of structures, of course, I'm not gonna go in details. I mean, the idea is that we input and outputs, it's it, uh, the type of the input and outputs are given, but in in smarter way, we, we can equivalently, we can transform, we can change it. And this is the smarter way that I think. So in the same, this one is again, it's a regression problems, but it's image to image, which is capable of handling multi, multiple number of sound source, sources. And I'm gonna skip all the details and I'm going to share the outcomes for the unseen case. And here is beamforming maps, and this is ground truth. And this one is the predicted, the predicted target maps from the trained models. As you can see here, these two, I mean, changing the number of the speakers here is it's a it's a almost. I mean, I mean, I can give you all the quantitative analysis, but I don't think that that's 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 I don't think that that's important. The idea is that somehow we are able to handle it. Now I want to move on. So the first thing is in the plenary case we had we we come up with target map ideas. So it's the problem can uh, convert it into image to image translation problems. In in the second case is that what about it's a speaker microphone case. What is this? Is that this is what we did so far, but is here is in, 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 in everything is we assume that in, in 2D space, in two dimensional Cartesian coordinate X, X and Y. But this is very limited case because we know that all we live in three dimensional space. Right? So we, we, we in, in our case, say we have here, and we're gonna hear a lot of sound from outside. So we put the microphone in, 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 in surface of spear. So it's a spear microphone array. And we put speakers around and we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing to, to build a beamforming map in spear. So we will get this kind of things. Now, from that, what we want to estimate is that the direction of that speakers that what, what kind of sound is coming from. So these will be like thigh and theta is going to be the, the values that we need to estimate it from the beamforming map in, 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 in a spherical beamforming map. And again, in these problems, the first approach is that just repeat it the same process. Okay, we do have spherical beamforming maps, and instead of having uh, polar coordinate of the location of speakers, we can do again. We can do target maps in in here, but in in this case, it will be the spherical form, right? So now this is the input, and this one is the output. 
but in 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 this case, both of them in the square map is will be this sphere surface. So the first attempt or trials that everybody can think of is that think about the Earth, right? And we have the square map. So what we did this one is a uh, rectangular projections is a kind of uh, it's a panoramic view. So we can do this, we can do this and this, and we get, and we can apply the same method that we did. So that was the, the, the first thing that we tried, but think about it. I mean, for, for the spheres, and when you do this kind of, uh, such kind of projections here, there's gotta be some distortions as you can see in here, equator is pretty much the same, but if you far away from, you walk around, walk away from the equators, we know that it's, there, there's gotta be some dis distortion effect kicked in. And that's something that I don't, I mean, here, when you do this kind of manipul uh, this kind of the conversion or many uh, manipulations, uh, we have distortion effect, which we nobody wants. And somehow we need to have some kind of this, uh, somehow we need to, we, we need to create it distortion free. Right? So the idea is that, okay, think about, so think about the conventional convolutional neural net it's, uh, it's, it's based on the image, the images so like grid type of data is, it's stored. So it will be, when you design the corners of, in the, I mean, the CNN is we have to design the corners and the shift in it. But here in, in and, but if you do using the same shape of corners for the entire, right? That's, that means we don't, it, in, in, if we decide to use in the convention, conventional CNN, it doesn't take account for the distortion behaviors. We come up with, we came up with the spherical, spherical convolutions. What do you mean by spherical means that there's two things that we need to consider it. The first one is counter sampling patterns. Okay, around here, equator is pretty much the same as CNN things, but if you go away from it, that means instead of doing this, we have to do these because these are the equivalent in, 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 in this is the, say it's, it's a, in the surface of sphere, this will be D, right? And the way that we do is we assume that we put the patches on it, we, that's how we, we compute it. And another thing is that this is, is sphere and instead of doing just the conventional convolutions, we have to do circular convolutions because in here is this, these are the same as here. So we call it, this is a, the convolution, the circular convolution operatings. And we implement the spherical convolutions instead of, uh, instead of using the conventional way of, and again, this is the, the beam forming maps and this is uh, the, this ground truth. If you do regular CNNs, and I mean, I mean, it's, it's not that good, but as you expected it, and if you do spherical CNN, it's, it's, a, it's a really pretty good. You can see that it's the, 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 the ground truth and the predictive one is pretty matched. And the second issues or challenge that I have for the spherical case is that, I mean, this one is really, uh, I like these ones to share it because it's, uh, I can have, uh, I have a lot of things to say. So, okay, so far what it did is that we're talking about the location of the speakers or sound, right? And I haven't talked about the frequency. So when you speaker make some sounds or noise, we can say with the different speaker, uh, different frequencies, whatever. So, the, but how do you can handle different range of frequencies? So the, again, it's just think about the, the easiest way. Is it probably okay, fix the frequency like here? Or get the training data set, train the models. And if you change the frequencies, get the another models and another one. But as you can see, there's no that we want, I mean, by 
in, in order to do this, we have to assume that we know the frequency, you know, the best, which is not realistic. I don't think this is in practice. This is, I don't think this is practical, All right? So this one is not a good idea. I mean, we can do this, but it is not, it, this is not a useful at all. So of course, everybody wants to, instead of these individual things, probably like all around servers, regardless of the frequency range, it should be somehow we, we want to create some models which is independent of frequency range. Of course, this will be the eventual, the ultimate things that we want to do, but I, I don't know. I mean, we can try it, right? I mean, here, these two is kind of extreme case. Here it's individual one and we want to combine all. I mean, say if we have this kind of problems to, to, to for instance, for the data scientists, probably these two, these two are the only options they, for they can think of it. But like, like us as mechanical engineers say, or, or or uh, engineers, I mean that, so we know that it's a frequency, it's a really, it's a, the frequency is, uh, is related to alias behaviors, because we, we, ha we have to discretize, I mean, discretize it, like basically what it means is we're gonna sample it. In, so in the sampling frequency, there's some, so in, in, in the, when you're talking about, when it comes to frequencies that always we have to think and very, we have to be very be cautious on the spatial aliasings. And I mean, you don't need, if you don't know aliasing, that's okay. But what I'm saying is that there is some Nike criteria is that there is some, uh, the frequency limit. And then the here is based on the sampling frequencies. And within, within this, it's it's uh there's no aliasing behaviors above that there's aliasing means aliasing is the, the actual high frequency can be observed in the low frequency right so again is again you don't need to know but here and these two have different different physics different behavior based on the physics that means that means here, even though some of the frequency ranges are different, but the physics are pretty much the same. There's no aliasing behaviors. Over there, it's above the, the aliasing limits, frequencies, the range is different and fraud, but we know that this aliasing occurs. So we're starting from this, and now we come up with, we, we, we figure, we find out I mean, there's two networks at least. One is that, I mean, this one is like generating and these are the, from the beam forming maps, how do you, how, how can we uh, compress, the, uh, compress the information, we can encode it. So here above one is for take, take into account non-aliasing behaviors and the bottom one taking into aliasing behaviors. So, and these are the kind of structures. I mean, something that uh, if this problem isn't given to data scientists, there's no way they can with this kind because they have no idea on the alias and behaviors, right? So I'm saying that is that when you do network designs, when you do data-driven approaches, it's, 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 it's must. We have to, if you know the physics behind, if you know the physics background, that means here, based on the physics that I know, it's a physics informed network designs. That's something that I want to emphasize here. And this, of course, I mean, some of the results that I want to show is that in this for non spatial aliasings and beam forming maps and the target is, is ground truth, and this one is the estimated one, pretty much the same. These are the conventional methods, just, just for the uh, comparison reasons, as you can see, the, our proposed one is way better than the others. And for the spatial aliasing, also we can see that it's pretty much uh, good. And so far, all the data set that we are talking about and is talking to is the simulated, simulated data one. It's uh, 
we 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 use the data set is simulated and we trained them. And probably the next thing is that we have to justify and validate our method in the real experiment setups. That's the, and I mean, here in postdoc we don't have, that's why uh, we have collaboration with the Chris and this is uh, like a nice, uh, they agreed to build up this, uh, this, uh, the experiment setups basically it's, it's a spear and put 65 speakers around and in the middle we put the put the spear microphone array and basically pretty much the same and and this is the, the and which is actual the, the, the picture of that and I mean here is it's difficult to see it that's why we put in in 360 cameras for panoramic view over there and is is true locations and beamforming maps and this one is the one estimated in 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 in, in our even in in the real case and these are the pretty much the same and also i'm showing this is uh, real time things one thing here that i want to mention is that usually this experiment is very time consuming very expensive that's why we use uh, computer to simulate it, right? But if we build up some kind of models and use some kind of conclusions out of a simulated data set, of course, the simulation data set is a little different from, there's some, gotta be some gaps because the simulations does not take into it all the uncertainties and there's some lot of uh, co the complexity we're not able to take into considerations. But in order to, do, in order to apply the models they will build based on the simulation models into real experiment data set. One way that we can do is that in the simulation data set, we inject intentionally a lot of noise and uncertainties. Using that data set, if we build up the models, build up is tends to be very robust. We call it is simulation to real, sim to real case. This is kind of nowadays days is very general approach to, 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 to make the model is more robust, even if you can directly apply to real experiment settings. That's something that also I want to emphasize and focus in our this. Now, what is, what about, what kind of applications that we can, these, what kind of applications that we can think of it is that, okay, first one is, uh, I'm showing the movie clips. There are many applications that we can think of. First one that we've been focusing on is that suppose that I mean here you went the hikings and you climbed the mountains and you got troubles, you got lost, whatever. Uh, surveillance teams trying to get like I don't know your your smartphones and what's the last reception they have uh, GPS informations or uh, will have drones and the visual information that we can get out of from the from 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 the cameras. But think about if you just uh, have a trees. There are some. There are many trees in the mountains and in the visual is the information or data is in, in many, in most cases, very, it's gonna be very, very limited. So in that case, if the survivors uh, happen to make some kind of sound and noise or for those, for the, for uh, ask for the help, if we are able to pick up the location of that sound, we can utilize that. So using like, it could be a like lot, lot of different data sets from GPS signals and the drones, uh, visual visual data set and sound and things use utilize all the useful information, all the available information to to help the rescue of some the some survivors. That's the the first applications that we do, and these are the applications featured in in a lot of broadcastings and news media's and articles things like that. And here I want to I want to show some of the uh, ongoing research based on these the sound source localizations and the only reason that I'm that I'm showing uh, I want to share with this is how can we develop 
the, the core technology into, into different applications. Yeah. So in this, in this project is that from the point to either line or surface acoustic sources. I mean, think about it. If you have a speak, I mean, the speaker is we, we can assume that it's point as a point, right? And if you have many points, and we can think of this one is line. Right? If you have, and this is gonna be the surface. So what we did is we did a lot of, but using the superpositions, right? This is all we assume that all the, it's a linear systems and the acoustic speakers can be distributed, can be distributed. So now here is, if we have this, that kind of the beam forming maps, actually it's coming from, I mean, the speakers is located here, not the visual one. And we say somehow we are able to recognize the, these things. And the example is, is that if we say, suppose we have this kind of beam forming map as image, but actually you know that it looks like image, but it's remember this one is visualized sound using the beam forming map. So basically you're gonna hear the sound using that sound, using the, the models, we can estimate it like the first one, probably the sound is P and O. We are not, the speakers are not saying P, it's, it's, say it's gonna make some noise on it with the different locations. When you do sound, because we are talking like that, so we can send out the informations. But in this case, like, Again, this information can be sent by sound, but here in, 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 in the different versions, the key information is located, the loca is, is located in the location of the speakers. This one is very interesting. Something that I like it is, is acoustic uh, cryptography. What's, what's, what's it mean by the crypto, uh, cryptography is that this is a, you know, it's, it's a method of protecting information communicate through the use of the code. And I want to send, I mean, if I'm a senders and we have senders or receivers, I want to send the useful informations without let others know, right? It's, I, want in the, I want to send informations in, 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 in very secure manners. So we, we, we build up this experiment settings and we have, now instead of microphone array, we have array of speakers like that. And we say we want to send out H and we will turn on the speakers is located in the H and we make sound on it. If you, this will be, this is the sound that you're going to hear it. And actually this, the such sound carries H, the alphabet, we call it is, uh, uh, encryptions and we are encoding here and we use that uh, microphone arrays and using the beamforming maps and we use uh, we can do uh, decryptions in this case it is based on the neural net and we call it deep decodings and we can recognize okay the information that it, the sender trying to say is H. The good thing about this is in order to decode this we need we need all the trained network structures and uh, all the weights and bias informations. So if we share the senders and receivers and we share that kind of informations, nobody others is, nobody can 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 hack the information that. And another application that we think is here, this one is very, I mean, this is industrial wise, it's it's, it's I we believe this has a potential to to in uh, in a lot of industries. And this is crack identifications. And suppose you have some kind of big plate that we want to uh, do the inspections on it. We want to inspect, we want to see there is some crack on it or not. So suppose there is a big plate with the unknown cracks. We don't know there is crack. We don't know, we don't know whether we have that crack or not. Then uh, we put the speakers behind, make some try the uh, make some sound or noise, whatever. And as you know, that is, if you have a hole on it, 
they're gonna be make some. So this is uh, again, it's another, it's acting as a, as a as a as a this diffractions, right? It's of course the power is decreased, but right? and now it's put the mic, I mean microphones, and to figure out. So here, the good thing is that it's ex, uh, extremely cheaper and in 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 non contact. So we can do using the sound for the correct inspections and correct identifications. Another application, so the ongoing project that we've been trying to think is that, okay, suppose we have any kind of plate or mechanical structures, whatever, and vibration is a lot of issues. And in order to measure the analyzed mode, mode shape of that plate, right? And in these are the previous approaches. One is probably we put some accelerometers, accelerometers in, and we, we can get some signals out of it. We do some math to figure out what kind of the vibration mode on it. But the bad thing is that we point the drawback always is contact wave. So we have to have discrete the point of measurement out of that. We have to do a lot of math. And another way is we have laser fibrometers, we have it requires the global scanning process. It's going to take a lot of time and the cost. It's, it's not efficient at all. So the way that we propose it here is that uh, either it's, it's in the resonance or we just give a, the impulse to get to let the plane excitations. Right? Using that, I mean, the same as the sound, right? And we apply the same method and we can see like uh, pressure vibratings using that and in, 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 in non-contact model analysis, basically it will be, if that's the combination of that is probably we have to do neural and eigenmode decompositions or whatever. So basically what, I mean, this is, I don't have any, 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 the, the solid, the, the, the promising result or outcomes yet, but this is what, we are trying to, this direction that we are heading to. The second topic that I want to discuss is, um, again, is now I, I, I'm gonna change the gear to, 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 to totally different topics. Here in this case is material microscope, my, uh, microstructure image here. And in the material case is uh, in order to understand uh, mechanical properties and thermal properties. The the, the typical way is that uh, we need to some kind of to take the basically take a picture out of the material surface. We call it microstructural image. Here. And in that case, it's 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 a very it's a high resolution. So we use uh, the scanning electron microscopies and SAM or EDSM, whatever. And it's a weekly supervised microstructure segmentation. What I mean by that is I'm going to explain in the following this slide here. The background is that say metallic materials exhibit the wide range of mechanical properties or even any, I mean, thermal or material properties according to formation of microstructures. It's the phase, whether it's ferrite, polite, bainite, martensite, whatever. But the problem is this one is just image. If you got trained and educated, say you have a PhD degree in, in the material side, material science and engineering, or you have more than 10 or 20 years of experience, probably that you can tell. I mean, this is the easy case, but, and the objective is that we want to propose the data driven approaches to microstructure segmentations to figure it out, which one, which in the machine learning framework, this is the segmentation problems. So we have image here and we want to do classifications for each pixels, we call it as segmentations. I mean, this is good. So we can we eventually using this uh, microstructure material image as inputs, the output is going to be using the same image with the different colors only. So we can tell, okay, these are the, the same phase, the phase and these are the different phase. We can tell based on the ratio of Right, the portion of the phase probably in the statistical sense we can tell this is we can uh, statistically calculate the mechanical properties. The segmentation itself is is uh, is nothing new. 
the only contribution that we can have is that we uh, the the image image segmentation is is nothing new in the computer vision in the field of computer vision is very common. So using that one is in in two thousand eighteen in in these papers they they did that in 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 the similar things. But the problem, I mean, here if you have this kind of pictures and we have the outputs we do segmentations and we can compute the portion of the the, the phase itself which is i mean it's good but uh in in the practical sense is something that the reason that i don't like it is that okay this is good and we if we have models but it's again it's a supervised learning that means in order to train the models we need input and outputs input and a pair of input and outputs what do you mean by the pairs and given image of that we have we have say is we 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 need to we need to give labels in in each pixels right basically if you do uh, the segmentations if you suppose you have by hand you have to do use the different colors to to tag okay these are the martin side and these are the pair right something right I mean, this is it's it's a tedious and requires a lot of labor intensive ways, and I don't like it in person. And I I believe that for my at least for my engineering sense, this is impractical. Okay. So the research goal in this problem is that okay, these are the given inputs. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be material image here, but say any kind of image here, and the the previous research is that fully supervised, that means we need give them all the segmentations for each pixels, which we call it dense annotations. Okay. And I think this in this is it's it's asking too much. So on the other hand, the way that I'm proposing it here is that weekly supervised, what do we mean by weekly supervised, like this. We call it scribbling, and say um, if if I were the the expert, I mean these are in the same phase. We don't have to tell which one is because only thing is to say and use different colors. Say, I mean the these are in the same phase. I'm just scribbling. A uh, scribbling. I, I I believe that this is this is kind of okay to things. So I want to have weekly supervised microstructure segmentations requires only scribbling annotations for neural net training process. That's the, the, the direction that we want to go. And the methodology here is, again, is because image is a CNN based, but I'm going to skip all the details. But only thing is that is it's a use, using the smarter way of defining loss functions to, to, to when you do the training or optimization process. But I'm going to skip all the rest of the things and jump into the result right away. And if this is the image here, and is this is a scribble annotation? I mean, okay, this, I mean this, and this is the outcome. It's amazing. I mean, that's something durable that everybody can do. And another example is that now we have different one, and these are the annotations that we can get out of. I mean, if we're just looking at the input and outputs, the result, it's just it, this is just image segmentations. But if you think about the required annotations and labeling process. This is this is totally different, and at least I can say this is practical way. This is the max. Uh, this is makes sense to us, so everybody can utilize it. And probably this will be the next. Uh, the last step is that okay. So think about the process. We have given inputs. And by the expert, they're gonna scribbling annotation process. We will do segmentations. Probably that will be the end of the story, but that's not because if we have perfect matches on the segmentations, there will be there will be completed. But as you can see here, there's some these uh, misclassified pixels here. That means doesn't work. 
at some point, right? So now it's time to human in the loop. Because the, in the traditional way is that so we generate a lot of, lot of training data set and we train the models. Once we build up the models, that's it. But instead of doing that, let's do the smarter way. Give annotation first and using that data set, train the models and we, we get some outputs. And if you have misclass misclassified points and or there is when you do the classification or segmentations and, and certain point, there are some ambiguities and uncertainties like here. Then now it's time to humans gonna kick in the process again. So let's do, let's think about this and here in say we have some uncertainty. That's why we do it for with high risk in uh, we give another annotations, extra, extra data or informations in the, with, in, in the pixel with high uncertainties, right? That's why if we have a sequential way of trainings, that's the benefit. Then we will do another iterations. Of course, it gets better, but it's not perfect. And we do another iterations to that and gets better and better. So we call it, this is active learnings. The model is evolve and each models and humans got involved and give a better annotations. That, that's the way that we need to, I think it's more in, 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 the, in, the, in the engineering side is much better than that. So the summary of that, as you can see, we have, I give just to just the, the examples. Again, it's probably it's not the sync with your research topics, but that's not my purpose of today's talk. The purpose of this talk is that using the, think about the data driven approaches, but in your, your applications, but don't forget about the, your, the model physics models. How can you utilize with embedded, embedded it in, in your model in, in, in things into your, into, in, into your, into your systems.